I'm going to run through the process I used to create a geodesic dome in Vasari. There's a lot of examples online of how to do that using either visual scripting or traditional scripting techniques, but I wanted to see if one could do it just using the regular interface within Vasari or Revit. So I decided uh, the easiest way to go about that was to base the geodesic dome on an icosahedron. So the nice thing about an icosahedron is that it's easy to construct using three centered golden rectangles and then you connect the corners creates a 20 sided shape. And then once you have the icosahedron you can subdivide the triangles into what's called either a two frequency, three frequency, or four frequency geodesic dome. I'm going to start with a 2V um, just to kind of prove out the concept and then later on maybe I'll try to create a higher fidelity one. Okay, so in Vasari what I did is I created a simple surface family to create the golden rectangle. So I visited my old friend Pythagoras from high school and figured out, um, set this the hypotenuse of this triangle and called a, a, a labeled parameter dome radius. This is going to act as the radius of my dome, which I'll show later. Then I have a set of parameters set up, so um, the cosine of this adjacent angle um, times the hypotenuse creates the width of the golden rectangle, and then using the um, this formula creates uh, the length, which establishes it as the golden ratio, which is pretty cool. So I load that in to another family, center them and rotate them, and then create a half dome touch with the exact same radius as the hypotenuse, and then create a parameter that associates the two of them. And then I can flex it. Actually, I'll use my handy slider add in here and the whole thing flexes with it. Now what I'm going to use this uh, dome for is this uh, half sphere as I'm going to project points onto it that are going to be my placement points for the triangles. Okay so I've actually started placing those uh, that placement rig. I'm going to unhide it. And so all this is is a adaptive component with um, four equilateral triangles within it. And what I can do is I can place it at the corners. Now but before I do that, if I was going to create a perfectly spherical geodesic sphere, that would be fine. But actually for a dome, it's, it's better to have this point of the icosahedron pointed straight up. Um, because you'll see that create that sort of the top of the dome instead it would be sort of a kank to the side so I need to actually rotate all of this entire structure to the opposite angle so which is the opposite of this angle which is 3172 31.72 so I have everything hosted onto this reference line set my work plane and select this, move the center, 31, okay, and now I'm ready to go. So what I can do So I won't bore you with the rest, you get the idea. I'll place the rest and then come back. Okay, so now I have my partial icosahedron. I'm not going to bother with the bottom because I'm only doing half of the sphere. Okay, so now the tricky part was how do I get these points projected onto the sphere? So I looked at a couple different ways of doing it, um, and one way was using um, host by intersection but I couldn't figure out a way to host a point um, from a component onto a, a surface in a host family. 
So I was kind of playing around and actually I figured out a aspect of reference lines um, or lines in general that uh, I never knew before, which actually solved the problem for me. So let me demonstrate what I did. I'm going to actually hide one of these so I can see into the middle here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a line with 3D snapping turned on, chain turned off, from the middle of this um, icosahedron from the direct center. Okay, and it's identical points there, that's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out to this point. Now watch what happens. I'm going to zoom in. When I snap to this point and then move the cursor just out towards the surface, boom, that point snaps to the surface. See that? Now that point is, is coincident with that surface, which is exactly what I need. So I need to actually go out and do that um, anytime I have a point uh, that is not touching the surface. So here, go out to here. And these points are already on the surface. Okay, so now what I have is I have points that are on the surface that I can start placing the component on. So now what I'm going to do is, and I can actually just get rid of this at this point. And then I have my panel, which is just a another adaptive component, three point with equilateral triangle and then reporting parameters um, to tell me what the cord lengths are so I can keep track so that um, I know that my dome is accurate. Okay, so now I'm going to place that. You have to be careful to make sure that you're on the point that's on the surface and not the one beneath it. Okay, so now you start to see I'm actually projecting out onto the sphere. Okay, so as you can imagine, this is going to get a little bit tedious, and that's where one of the advantages of a scripting system would be that I could actually, you know, automate the placement of all the components. For for this uh, exercise, I'm going to have to actually do it manually, which is going to get a little bit tedious. But uh, so I won't bore you with it. Okay, so exactly seven minutes later, I have my geodesic dome. So yes, you know, it was a little bit tedious to uh, place all those points, but the effort was well worth it because now I have a dome that is uh, fully parametric. So you'll see, you know, these are uh, 16 meter and 18 meter cord lengths. That's a little bit uh, too big. So let's bring the um, home radius down to something like 5 meters, a little bit more realistic. And I can also, I've gone into my panel family here. I can give that a little bit of thickness. And I've also placed a little bit of a sort of PVC piping around um, the edge of the panel. All right, and there we have it. I've got my dome. And I've also taken all the, um, the, the golden rectangle 
the sphere and all the reference lines and added a visibility parameter to them so I can turn them off when I load it into the project. And there you have it. You have a fully parametric and accurate geodesic dome. So next time I think maybe I'll start playing around with a three frequency dome to make it a little bit finer mesh. And uh, check back with me in the summer when I'm going to actually try to build this thing in real life. Until then, see you next time.